Hey there planners, we're back today in the next video in the series for setting up your first bullet journal. This is all about bullet journals for beginners and we are going to be covering a grid spacing cheat sheet in your bullet journal, which is really gonna be key for everything else we're gonna do. It's one of the greatest hacks for bullet journals of all time. So go grab your bullet journal and let's get planning. Now I know what you're thinking. Planning Annie, you said we were gonna be talking about future logs in this video, and you're right, I did say that. But then I realized in order to set up a future log or really any of the remaining pages, you're gonna to need to really understand the grid spacing and spacing on each page in your bullet journal. And so we're gonna to have to have a grid spacing cheat sheet. It's just one of my favorite tools. I set it up in every single bullet journal or doc grid notebook that I have. Um, it's one of the first things I do before I get too far into planning because I will refer to it over and over again. And so I wanted to make sure we cover that. So what I'm gonna have you do is actually flip to the first two page spread in the back of your bullet journal. So you want two pages side by side, um, and we're actually gonna work on this side of the page. And so what is a grid spacing cheat sheet? It is a quick reference guide for finding where, how to plot out things on your page, gives you the number of squares across the top, the number of squares down the page, where is middle, and then some quick reference for if you're setting up something that has four columns on each page or three columns or two columns, gives you quick reference guide for how to divide your page up. If you can think about the number of things you're gonna be setting up in your bullet journal that require you to sort of divide up the page, you can see how this page would be very important. So if you're looking for inspiration for this, I do have a Pinterest board all about the extras and hacks that go into bullet journaling. I will have that link down below, so go take a look at that. I'm gonna be setting up something very simple today just as a reference for you if you wanna follow along, but again, you can always get more ideas from the Pinterest board out there. So the first thing we do to set up a grid spacing page is to count the boxes. So you start in a corner and you can really pick any corner you want to. I'm gonna start in this corner, this is box one. And now from box one, we're gonna go down and across to give you a total number of boxes. So across, we're just gonna go two, three, and so on. All right, so that tells me I have 24 boxes across the top. And now we're gonna do the same thing down the page. All right, so I have 40 boxes down and 24 across. Now the first thing this allows me to do is quickly determine where the middle is. And this is where you might wanna grab your calculator uh, because we're going to be doing some math. Yes, I know I did not warn you, bullet journaling in some cases does require a bit of math. Don't be scared, it's very simple. And after we set up this page, you won't have to do much of it in the future. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I've grabbed a mod liner because I like to have the numbers in black and then I like to do some spacing in different colors. So first thing I'm gonna do is mark the middle across uh, the top of the page, which with 24, 12 is the middle, which tells me the line between 12 and 13 is my middle. So I've just drawn uh, kind of a dotted faded line there. I'm gonna do the same thing across, uh, across the page, which with 40 columns, 20 is gonna be my middle, which means between 20 and 21, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna mark that as my middle. Now you can see I've left a little bit of space here in the center, and that's because I wanna give the page a title. So I'm just going to mark uh, with my mild liner a little section here to title this page. So I've just drawn kind of a crude box and I will title this page grid spacing. All right, so there, I've got the middles marked and if you want to, you can stop right here. This might be all you need. You can do the rest of the math on the fly. 
but I do like to give myself just a little bit more information. So there are times when you're setting up items in your bullet journal where you're going to have columns across the page or rows down the page. You can have those columns with or without spaces. And what I mean by that is if I'm drawing three boxes across the page, I can just draw three boxes with two lines in between. That gives me my three columns. Or I can draw a box, have a little space, draw the next box, have a little space, draw the final box. Depending on whether I want spacing or no spacing between my columns and rows tells me how I need to divide up the page. So I like to give myself just a little cheat sheet for that as I'm going through um, my grid spacing cheat sheet setup. That way I can quickly reference. Now I keep this really simple. The typical ways that we would set up if you think about how you're using your bullet journal for your calendar, you may have the page divided in um, thirds, fourths, or sevenths. Those are the most common. And so I like to draw that in, thirds, fourths, or sevenths. Um, if there's anything else, I can just come here and figure it out. So there is a little formula to help you figure out how to draw things with spaces. And I'm going to talk to you about that now. All right, let's start with thirds. Let's say I need to make three columns on my page and I want there to be spaces between each of the three boxes. So I know I have 24 total, pay, 24 total boxes to work with. So what I would do is think about 24, but I need two spaces. I need a space between the first and second box, and then I need a space between the, the second and third box. So that's 24 minus two. That's the first part of the formula. That gives me 22 boxes, and now I need to divide that by three, which gives me seven with a little left over. So what I'm actually gonna do is start one box in, because I wanna account for that little left over, and I'd like to give, my space, uh, give myself space on this side. So I can go start with the second box and go seven over. So there's my first box. I give myself a space, and now I do seven again and then I give myself a space and I do seven again. So now I've divided my page into three columns with a space in between. And I'm just gonna tell myself what this is here. I'm gonna give this a title. This is three columns with space. And this is seven boxes. Now I've got a cheat sheet. Every time I go to set up any page that takes three columns with spaces, I can quickly flip back to my grid spacing, spacing sheet and see I would start on box number two, I would end on box number 24, and then row, uh, column number 17 and nine, I would have spaces. That's how I set it up. Now I'm gonna do the page into fours using the same methodology. So I've got 24. I have to calculate the number of spaces first. So I need a space between box one and two, that's one. I need a space between box two and three, that's one. I need a space between box three and four, that's three. So I would take 24 and subtract three, that gives me 21, and now I'm gonna divide that by four. That gives me five and some change. And so I'm going to add my change in on this side, on the inner side, because that's where I want this extra space to be. I come over one and I go five boxes. Skip a space and go five more boxes. Skip a space, five more boxes. Skip a space, five more boxes. And now I have my four columns. So I'm gonna write in five boxes here to remind myself, and this is four columns with space. All right, and then the other one we commonly use is seven. So thinking about the same formula, I take 24, I subtract out the spaces, which there are gonna be six spaces. That gives me 18, and I'm going to divide that by seven. That gives me two and some change, so I'm going to 
start over here, give myself the space, and then give myself two boxes and a space, two boxes and a space all the way across the page. Now with sevens, you can see I have some additional room on this side. I actually have three boxes here and one box here. You can certainly shift that over if you want to. Um, it just depends. Like if I wanted to give myself two boxes here and two boxes here, I could definitely do that. But this is how I would divide it up for seven columns. Now, let's say I don't want any space. I'm actually gonna capture that down here at the bottom so I can quickly see. So let's do three columns. That would be 24 divided by three, that's eight. So I just start right here on the side and do eight columns, eight boxes. So this is eight boxes, three columns, no space. Now I know how to divide my page into thirds. Now I'm going to divide it into fourths. So that would be 24 divided by four, that's six. So I start right here on the edge and I go over six. All right, and then I draw my lines in. And this is six boxes and four columns no space. And then again, if I wanted to do seven, I would just take 24 divided by seven. That's going to be three with some change left over. So I'm going to start one in and do three boxes. All right, so now you see the general way that you can set this up. The reason I said to set this up on the right side is because you can go right over here and do the same thing with how you divide the page up vertically as well for rows. You can go ahead and set that up. I typically don't do that just because I think for whatever reason rows are easier to set up than columns, but that is totally a per personal preference. I just wanted you to see how you go about doing the math with space, without space, and how you can set it up. You could recreate this page on the left-hand side of the page and do your rows as well with the, using the same methodology. You can also change it up. I've done three, set four, and seven. You could add in a whole bunch more than this. This is just a really important page uh, for you to have in your bullet journal as you're doing various setups. All right, so that concludes the hack. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give me a thumbs up and let me know. Leave any questions that you have down below. Even if they're math questions, math is not my strong suit, but I will do my best to figure it out. And any other questions you have about setting up your bullet journal for the first time, leave those in the comments below and I will certainly get around to answering them as quickly as possible so that you can get up and running. Now, as promised, we are going to do a future log video. That's gonna be our next video. So make sure you're subscribed for more content like this and to not miss any of this series in the future. Thanks for planning with me.